All right, so as stated, I'm Lisa Wakefield, and I'm <coughs> Connie's kind of same person. I'm an English fellow, but I'm in Peru. So I'm based out of Lima, Peru, and I'm there for 10 months working with the Ministry of Education, and <coughs> Connie needed a presenter, so I said, hey, I'd love to go to Chile a bit. <laughs> so I'm here, so thank you all so much for coming tonight. And a little bit about me, as Connie said, we are from Arizona. Yay! So, how many of you have been to Arizona? Anyone? Woohoo! Did you go to the Grand Canyon? Yes. Yeah, everyone goes to the Grand Canyon when they're in Arizona. And it's very hot in Arizona. Um, in about a month or so, it'll be about 45, 46 Celsius. Oh so, yeah, you're all like, oh. So, it's a very hot state, but it's home. And this is my family. So this is my son, Ben, my husband, who is uh, an assistant principal at a high school, myself and my daughter. And a little bit about me, I love exercising and I love doing CrossFit. I may not look strong, I know I look old, but I'm stronger than I look. So don't mess with me in the presentation. Alright, I want to talk about student engagement. As I observed classrooms in Peru, I decided that this was an area I really wanted to focus on in Peru. So I hope it will be beneficial for you. So do your students ever look like that? Yes. <laughs> really? Okay, how many of you are high school teachers? Okay, how many of you are elementary or primary? All right, anything else? Any, any university? Okay, so yeah, sometimes you look out in the audience and that's what your students look like. So my goal today is to make sure your students don't look like that, that you have some ideas of ways to keep them engaged in learning. So we have a few objectives. The first one is to define active participation. Second, understand why it's beneficial, not just for students, but also for teachers. We're going to learn some strategies today. And not only are we going to learn them, but I'm going to make you practice them. If I'm going to teach you about active participation, I'm going to model you being active participants. By me. <laughs> and then I want you to reflect upon the strategies I teach and ask yourself, will these fit my teaching style? Can I use them in my classroom? If not, how can I change them and use them? And then maybe you can even share them with fellow teachers who think they're amazing. All right, so student engagement. I don't like having that computer because I feel stuck to it. There's a man in the US, his name is Dr. Schmoker, and he was an educator, and he decided to go out and observe 1,500 American classrooms. And in doing that, he created a book called Results Now, and this is what he found. 85% of the classrooms he observed had less than 50% of the students engaged in learning. <coughs> Process that for a second. 85%. So, what that means is only 15% of those 1,500 <coughs> classrooms had more than 50% of the students even thinking about what was going on in the lesson. That's America. Would you say it's true in Chile? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I want you to kind of think about that. And I mean, when I read that research, I was like, that's terrible. What are our students learning if they're not actively engaged? Oh, and I forgot to tell you, there's notes. There's little blank spaces in your note paper to write in information where things are underlined. So, but don't turn the page yet. Don't turn yet. Because here's your next piece, and I don't want you to cheat. There's no cheating. <laughs> So I want first our, our first strategy is think, pair, share. So I want you to think, what is active participation? What do you think I mean when I use the word active participation? When you're done thinking about what that might mean, and there's no wrong answer. It's whatever you think. Then I want you to turn to a partner and pair and tell each other what you think it means, and then I'll ask a few of you to share. Take a minute and take it. Thank you. 
We are in Chile. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> and guess what? Your students will do the exact same thing. Your students will do the exact same thing. So you have to coach and you have to model. All right, we are in Chile. One, two, three. Everyone has the right answer. Okay, here's the next practice. It is Wednesday. One, two, three. All right, excellent. Okay, here's the real one. Here's your test. Teachers who use active participation strategies are more effective. I, I did not <laughs> say three. You gotta be patient. See, you're so excited. And your kids will be the same way. All right, so I'm gonna say it again. Teachers who use active particip uh, participation strategies are more effective. One, two, three. Excellent. And you have parts too, so this is going to be the right answer. Make sure you have them as the teacher. Students remember more with active participation. One, two, three. Excellent. All right, again, how long did that take me? Yeah. It didn't take me any time. Everyone was involved. I'm able to see if you understand or not. And it was so cool. Last <coughs> week I was in another region of Peru, and I went after I did this training. I did a night school visit, and the woman took pink post-it and a green post-it. Every kid in the classroom had one, and they were all doing this. <laughs> Every single one of them. It was so cool to see. So this is simple, and you know what? You can use red and green cards. You can use vocabulary. So if you were teaching um, fruits and vegetables, <coughs> you could give them a card, or they could make their own card that says fruit and vegetable, and you hold up a fruit, and they have to hold up either fruit or vegetable. So you can use words, you can use colors. I mean, modify, adapt, however it will work for your class. And again, you now know if they understand, and if you need to reteach, and everyone is participating, which is the beauty of it. Okay, so what's that called? And the other reason you want to wait one, two, three, besides making sure um, you know everyone doesn't copy Connie, is some students need more time to process. Mm -hmm. So give that wait time. You know, take time one, two. And let students, especially those who struggle with the language and need to translate in their head and take a couple minutes, give them time to think. Or ask the question, wait 15, 20 seconds for time to think, and then say your one, two, three. But give them the opportunity to do that. All right, the next one is called a 12-word summary. And it is to summarize, for you guys in a minute, to <coughs> summarize what active participation means in 12 words or less in, on your paper. Um, and you can only use 12 words. So you can't use 13, you can't use 14, and you can do 9 or 10, it shouldn't be 4. It should be as close to 12 without busting 12. All right? So and if you need to go back to your notes and read the definition of active participation, Go ahead and do that, and then take about two minutes and summarize what active participation means in 12 words or less, and just write it right next to the slide.
and count your number of words. <coughs>
All right? So after I ask a question, you need to get up and move to the corner that you believe is true. And it's not you, not your friend. And then when you get to that corner, I want you to talk. Why did you go there? And if there's 30 of us there, <coughs> kind of getting groups of three or four and tell each other why you picked that corner. So it's a speaking. This is where we want students speaking. So here's your first question. <laughs> Chile is the best country to live in South America. Chile is the best country to live in South America. <laughs> We'll see how patriotic you Chileans are. Okay, well, no one strongly disagrees. That's a positive. Feels a little eugenics Okay, so you guys talk about why you're there. You guys split in half and talk about why you picked the It's politically
everyone see this? If you're line A, raise your hand. Okay, and this is line B. Line B, raise your hand. Okay, line A will ask, and then we'll switch it. And line A will be the line that moves. Okay, so on the count of three. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Who do you live? 
you and then I collect them and see. And then if we were to come back for another day of training, I would go over the questions that were the most common or I would write a note to you talking about that. So just another strategy or an idea for you. There's my work cited. And thank you so, so much for coming. You were an awesome, awesome audience. And I hope there's one thing that you can take back with you. I know when I go to training, I learn so, so much. And my brain has to go, you know what? You can't do it all. <laughs> so pick one thing. <coughs> so I get to a lot of times and say, where can I find more of these? I would challenge you to say, just pick a couple, try them, get good at them, get your students good at them, and then add a couple more later. But don't try all 10 of them tomorrow. It'll be a nightmare. Take one or two and work on them.